All right. I'll be the first to admit our special teams may be better than I give it credit for because that's all we had as our offense in this game. Wild win 5-2 in Montreal. Fleury gets what is probably his final win and final game played in Montreal and gets a standing ovation afterwards too, which is really nice. But this game just felt bizarre, I guess. it. One, I was having trouble seeing it because I had other obligations to do, but it's just, when I came back to watch the highlights, I'm like, what in the hell did I miss? Like, two fights from Michael Pizzetta happened in this game. Two shorthanded goals on the same penalty by fourth-line guys. Like, what in the, am I in the Twilight Zone? What is going on? But anyway, let's get down to business. So, it's Fleury versus Montembeau is the goalie matchup. And like I said, it was probably Marc-Andre Fleury's last game in Montreal. He didn't specify, but there's a really good chance that he might have played his last hockey there. So the native is obviously going to get the start there. Good on the Wild to have that happen. And before this game started, Matt Boldy and Alex Goligoski were injured going into the game. We'll know more about Boldy once we get back home because right now they have him listed as day-to-day. We need to figure that out as soon as possible because we'd love to have him back, and I don't think we're going to keep up the pace of scoring shorthanded goals like we did in this game. But anyways, Dakota Mermis comes into the lineup in for Alex Goligoski. So, at 3.30 in, Connor Dewar shoots, it hits the post, and Brandon Duhame almost puts it in. You'll hear about both those names later. 4.38, Felino and Brodine get ridiculously close in front of the net, but nothing goes. At 5.20, Flurry denies a two-on-one chance, and he finally gets into the game, finally gets the juices going. At 6.10, Montreal gets a roughing penalty. Jake Anderson, Minnesota gets their first power play. Nothing. 0 for 1. Okay. So then at 8.43, Minnesota gets a tripping penalty. Ryan Hartman specifically. And not only did Montreal not score on this power play, they gave up two shorthanded goals in the span of 25 seconds the first goal of the game goes to brandon duhame shorthanded goal 920 in it's his second goal of the season and assisted by jacob middleton his second assist of the season basically jacob middleton forces a turnover at minnesota's blue line duhame's able to pick it up go the other way two on one with joel erickson on the other side he doesn't even bother passing doesn't even look that way Full on, focus on the shot, waits, 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 boom, fires. And is able to score, get it right under the glove. Low under the glove, right past Sam Montembeau. And just like that, shorthanded, it's one nothing Minnesota. But wait, there's more. Yeah, 25 seconds later, Connor Dewar gets his first goal of the season, shorthanded. This one didn't get an assist by anybody because this one, frankly, shouldn't have gone in. Not because Dewar wasn't good, but because Montreal is bad like the fact i i saw this goal and i'm like there's no possible way <laughs> there's no way that went in on an nhl netminder sam montebo continues to surprise us basically duhame once again gets on a two-on-one this time it's with connor dewar but he says screw it i'm not gonna make it to the net this time i'll just shoot quickly so he shoots and forces a rebound it's a shot off the pads goes right to dewar dewar is fighting in front with tanner pearson he's fighting in front with tanner pearson and so he's able to battle within net front. Arbor Jakai comes into that skirmish between Dewar and Pearson. Both him and Dewar put their sticks on the puck at the same time. So it's like this. And the puck just squirts up and over the shoulder of Sam Montembeau and just trickles into the net. And just like that, it's 2-0 on the same, on the same penalty for Montreal. They didn't even score. We got two off of them. So already the fourth line is producing in bunches and they weren't even together when this happened. It's 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 great. It's beautiful when that happens. But we continue. 11.30 into the game, Rossi gets a close chance from the slot, almost has it. 14.23, he does the same thing again, but this time he passes to Felino, and Felino just off of the crossbar. That close, that close to making it 3 nothing, but just off the crossbar. Then... 15.36 into the first period. Flurry denies Jake Anderson all alone in front. The best chance Montreal had up to that point. And Minnesota kind of left Flurry out to dry a few times because they would leave 
guys wide open in front of the net and Flurry would just have to make these big saves. And he did. So that's good for Flurry. Then we move on to the second period. This is where things start to get hectic, chippy, uh, extracurricular, as announcers always love to say, because extracurriculars mean beating the hell out of somebody after the play's over. Right? That's what I did when I did extracurriculars, too. <laughs> anyway, 125 into the second period, Montreal gets a tripping, tripping penalty. Uri Slavkovsky gets this one. And then, 201 into the second period, Montreal also gets a slashing penalty. Caden Gooley this time. So now, with a minute 24 left, it is a 5-on-3 for Minnesota. And if you don't score at least one goal on a 5-on-3, you screwed up. Like, that it, if you didn't score on this, the game would turn against you. Luckily, if you need a power play goal and you don't know who to turn to, go to Joel Eriksson. He's got them in bunches. He's got them in droves. He's probably got a stockpile that's good enough for a nuclear winner of power play goals. He is that rolling when it comes to this stuff. He gets his second goal of the season, also on the power play, 217 into the second period, assisted by Zuccarello, his third of the season, and Kaprizov, his third of the season. So like I said, five on three for 124. The puck goes to Mojo. Then it goes to Zuccarello down in the corner. And he's going to play pitch and catch with the Kaprizov behind the net because they always do that. They always scare everybody else. They do that for a little bit. Eventually, Kaprizov, he sneaks in near post to scare the Montreal defenders away from Joel Eriksson X. So they say, okay, we're going to cover, cover Kaprizov. They go to Kaprizov. Then Zuccarello says, well, there's the open lane right in front to Joel Eriksson X. He just keeps whacking at it until eventually he gets his rebound and it goes in. So just like that, it is now 3-0 Minnesota, and we still have not gotten an even strength goal. It's about to get weirder. Don't worry. 546 into the second period. Montreal tripping penalty. Cole Caulfield gets this one. Minnesota doesn't convert. But okay, so what? Actually, it gets worse for Minnesota's case, because this is where Tanner Pearson scores for Montreal. Finally gets the Bell Center rocking. It's 3-1 after this. Pearson's second goal of the season. 9.47 in and no assist on this. It was a mirror image of Duhame's goal where it becomes a two-on-one after a turnover in the offensive zone. Two-on-one. Anderson's with like Sean Monahan or somebody like that. They go up. Pearson doesn't even bother looking, looking. And he just fires, goes right over Fleury's shoulder, snipes him, 3-1. And now the Bell Center's on its feet. So that sucks. Then things start to get hectic. 11-14, Duhame and Michael Pazetta fight each other. And might I say, Pazetta was the only positive tonight for Montreal. Granted, two goals were scored, yada, yada, yada. And obviously, the bad news with Kirby Doc and Kaden Gooley both coming out of this game. But the only thing to cheer for in at the Bell Center, if you weren't cheering for Marc-Andre Fleury or a Wild fan, was Michael Pazetta. Two fights, one and both. And he just laid people out all night. He was rolling. So Pizzetta wins this fight against Duhame. Then at 14.09, both of them got fighting majors, by the way. 14.09, Minnesota gets an interference penalty. It's Erickson Eck. Montreal does not capitalize. Then 15.46, Montreal gets an interference penalty. It's Uri Slavkovsky. Minnesota does convert on this one. And it's Karol Kaprizov. It took him a little while. Granted, it wasn't as long as like the second year where we had to wait till Ottawa for him to score, but we were figured, yeah, you kind of got to get one here, buddy. And he finally does. Third game into the season, he gets his first goal, 17 22 into the second period, assisted by his favorite man, Zuccarello. Fourth of the season for Zuccarello, he's rolling. And Addison gets his second assist of the season. Basically, it's a power play. Addison has the shot at the point, it's a DDD pass over at the corner boards to Zuki. He's at the zone, cross zone, cross ice pass, down low to Kaprizov, who's at the bottom of the circle. One-timer near post, easy stuff. Montembeau can't catch it. And just like that, it is now 4-1 Minnesota. They are rolling in Montreal. Anyway, there was more in this second period. So it starts with two minutes left, exactly two minutes left or 18 minutes in, if you want to go that way, Minnesota gets a hooking penalty. It's Duhame that gets this one. But Montreal doesn't convert. And the reason they don't convert is because Fleury puts on one of the 
two saves of the game, in my opinion. This one, a slot chance right in the slot by Slavkowski. He fires right off the pads. Tanner Pearson tries to just bang it in off the rebound, but he just extends the pads, hits the post, and is able to stop it as the horn sounds and the power play for Montreal ends. But as all that's going on, Mojo gets the puck, even though the horn is sounding. He just skates up the ice, and Jakai just hits him for no reason. Period is already over. The horn sounded, so you can't make that excuse. And yeah, that's what ends the second period of a chippy game. Very, very chippy game. But to be honest, it's Montreal's own fault. Anyway, we go to the third period. And they mention that Caden Gooley from Montreal left the game with an injury. So on top of what happened with Kirby Doc earlier today where he tore his ACL and he's done for the season. Now Caden Gooley's also out for Montreal as well. So like I said, Michael Pozzetto was the only positive of tonight's game for Montreal. Just winning two fights and getting fans to cheer at least. So he does not make it back to the third period. Then 35 seconds in to the third period, Mike Matheson and Erickson Eck both get penalties and they both go to the box. It becomes five on five still. Or stays five on five. Then a minute into the third period, Flurry makes a very bad turnover to Jake Evans, but Evans gets hounded by the wild defense. He throws it right in front to Kovacevic, who I did not know until I looked that up. Kovacevic, again, wide open in front of the net, but this time Flurry goes around the world, circles the pad, stacks them, flips around like a like a top or like a wheel, and makes a Beautiful save. Oh my goodness. If you love old-time hockey, that's the type of save you want. And mwah, chef's kiss. It was beautiful. That's what I think was the other save of the game. And even Montreal fans started to cheer because they're like, oh my goodness, he's stealing a game. He's stealing a game, clearly. He's rolling. So it's, <laughs> it's just so good. Because <laughs> I know Flurry. He's the opposite of Gustafson. He likes to be like the dramatic saves and all that. Because when he does make those saves, oh, it doesn't look good. It looks beautiful when it happens. And it no difference here. So we continue. 341 into the third period. Montreal gets a high sticking penalty. Tanner Pearson gets this one. Minnesota's back on the power play. They're seventh of the game. So, yeah, a lot of penalties given out in this one. Montreal had had eight total. Minnesota had five total when all the dust settled. But in this one, it was their seventh of the game, high sticking from Pearson. And like I said earlier, who do you call when you need a power play goal? Joel Erickson Eck. Of course, he reached into that massive void of power play goals he's gotten. He's like, all right, I'll pick on another one right here. Give me two. He gets his third of the season, his second of the game, 520 into the third period, assisted by Kaprizov, his fourth assist of the season, and Zuccarello, who is leading the team with five assists of the season in three games. He's rolling. So Zuki's on the boards. He throws it to Kaprizov in the slot. Kaprizov works his way through two defenders, throws it right at the doorstep to Joel Eriksson, who is wide open. He's got green grass, spacious blue skies in front of him, and he just wraps it around Montembeau and just tucks it in far side. And just like that, it is 5-1 Minnesota. This game is essentially out of reach. But because Montreal fans came here to see something exciting, Michael Pazetta says, screw it, I'll take advantage of that. 13-15, he lays out John Merrill. Absolutely. It's a clean hit. And he just, boom, hits him. Dakota Mermis decides to stick up for John Merrill. And as much as I love Mermis, you're not really winning a fight against Michael Pazetta. It's kind of difficult. He's pretty good. And, of course, Pizzetta wins this one and gets the fans back into it at least a little bit. But, yeah, Pizzetta was rolling for Montreal. Other than that, kind of a night to forget if you're a Habs fan. Then at 14.08, Josh Anderson and Erickson Eck both get roughing penalties and misconducts. But Eric or Anderson gets a double minor for his roughing penalty, so Minnesota goes back on the power play. We don't get this one, so we finish off the night 3 for 8 on the power play. That's absurd to think about going into this game. But then Montreal decides to make it a little more of a game, put a little, you know, little nice toppings on top. So it isn't as much of a blowout as people think it is. Alex Newhook 
gets this goal. His third of the season, 17-35 in the third period, assisted by Savard, his first assist of the season, and Cole Caulfield, his first assist of the season. This play started with a great keep by Caulfield, who just basically gloved it, put it down at the blue line, wheezed past one of our defenders, able to dish it off somehow to Denny Savard, and Savard sees a wide open Alex Newhook on the back door. No goalie stopping that. And so just like that, it's 5-2, and this game, it's it's a little tense. Still two minutes left, but again, it's 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 still fine. We're not crazy. We're, nothing crazy is going to happen, right? Well, I was wrong. 18-16 left. Minnesota gets a tripping penalty because now of all times we decide we'll get another shorthanded goal. Felino gets this one, but Flurry able to deny those chances late, eventually able to hold off the Montreal attack. And they threw the puck into the net, but it, in reality, the horned sound and all that. So the Montreal fans are like, yeah, oh. nothing happened. But that's how the Wild win this one in Montreal 5-2. Flurry gets a standing ovation because, like I said, last game in Montreal, he had like 90-plus family members there. He, he dominated this game. He was the first star, and it made sense because he kept the Wild in this game. He only had to stop 24 shots, but, man, were some of them very tough in front of the net. So he gets first star, he rolls, and let's go to the stats. So shots, Minnesota beat Montreal in that category, 35-29. Face-off percentage, Montreal won that one, 52.7 to 47.3. Power plays, Minnesota dominated, 3-8, to eight, or 3-for-8 was Minnesota, 0-for-5 was Montreal. So it's not like Montreal didn't have chances to score, like reps, Refs just gave out penalties to anybody and everybody, and this game got chippy as well. So yeah, 13 penalties total. Montreal had five chances. Didn't get any of them. Minnesota had eight chances. Only got three of them, but scored two on shorthanded. So yeah, that's kind of what happens. And then the lopsided statistics here for Montreal in hits and blocks. Montreal out hit Minnesota 29-6. to So they definitely tried to lay the body to get back into this game. And shot blocks, Montreal blocked more shots than we did. They out out blocked us 20 to 7. So those two stats almost didn't matter. And usually they don't matter when you give up two shorthanded goals, especially on the same penalty. That just sucks the life out of you. That's like that's like a um special teams touchdown in football. It never happens, but when it does, oh my goodness, the biggest momentum shifter of all time. At least in my opinion. That or a turnover. But yeah, Wild win this one 5-2. Our next game, Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, back home against the Los Angeles Kings. But for now, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. Click like if you like it. Click subscribe if you want to see more because I've got more of them coming. Tell anybody who hasn't seen it, hey, go check out his videos. Why not? You got nothing better to do. You could put it on as like white noise in the background. Just have my mouth moving and just random, random sounds. You never know. But yep, that's all for this one. And I will see you later. Peace.